Democrats started the midterm election cycle with high hopes of taking back the House and the Senate. The party's chance of regaining control of the House is still looking good, but the prospect of winning back the majority in the Senate is diminishing. Here to talk about this is Travis County GOP Chairman Matt Makoviak and Ed Espinoza from Progress Texas. Thank you both for being here. Good to be sure. here. So, Ed, the forecasting website 538 shows mm -hmm. statistically Democrats have a one in five chance of controlling the Senate after the November midterms. What happened in the last year or so to, to drop the odds? Well, but look, the thing to remember is that 2018 was always a, a, an unfavorable map for Democrats. Democrats are defending 25 seats in the U.S. Senate this year, whereas Republicans only have to defend eight and they come from places such as North Dakota, Wyoming, Nebraska, places that aren't real movable. But the opportunities reside in places like Nevada, Arizona, and then, of course, here in Texas, maybe even Tennessee. So with a map like that, you know, Democrats are only down one seat in the U.S. Senate right now. They need two more seats to take control. That could come from Arizona and Nevada, could come from Texas. There's still a whole lot of campaign left in front of us. Uh, Matt, what did Republicans do to seemingly all but secure the Senate before the midterm elections? Again, nothing is set in stone <laughs> until the, the, the ballots are cast. <laughs> yeah, look, I think just from a statistical standpoint, uh, Ed's exactly right. I mean, I actually have never believed the Senate has been in play. Not for one minute, not even when, the, when things looked the, the, the darkest or the bleakest for Republicans did I believe it's in play. And the reason for that is that this is the most advantageous Senate map for either party in the history of the Senate since we went to direct election of senators. Uh, if you just look at those numbers that Ed was citing, 10 seats uh, have a Democratic incumbent from a state that Trump won two years ago. Uh, and I think Republicans have a good chance of netting uh, two or three of those seats. Uh, North Dakota, Missouri, and Florida would be my top three. Uh, so there's a good chance they're going to pick up those three. Uh, they only are really defending two seats that are truly competitive, Arizona and Nevada, and recent polls in both states have had the Republican candidate ahead. I've never believed Texas was in play, and I've never believed Tennessee was truly in play. Ultimately, we'll see. Depends what kind of, what kind of night it is. If it's a, truly a blue wave, uh, that would change things. I don't think that's likely to happen. I think it's going to be more in that middle range. Looking at the House, odds are more favorable for Democrats. 538 predicts that uh, a, a four in five chance the Democratic Party will win back the majority. Ed, how are you feeling about those odds? Yeah, I feel good about those odds. I think that in states like Texas, where you have a Democrat running in every single congressional district for the first time in three decades, is a glimpse at how energized Democrats are across the map, not only in Texas, but in states around the country. The other thing to keep in mind is that as, as heavily advantageous as gerrymandered district, districts can be for an incumbent, we are now in year seven, year eight of these gerrymandered districts. Erosion takes place on these boundaries. People move, communities change, certain states grow, others contract. That will have an impact on districts that are normally considered rock solid one way or the other. And I think this year it favors Democrats. Matt, do you think 80% is accurate when predicting the chance of Democrats winning the House? No, I wouldn't put it at 80%. I do think they're more likely than not to take the, to take the House back, but I think it's very, very close. Uh, if you take all the seats that are likely to go one party or the other, where it's pretty clear, including the Democratic pickups, there's about 27 swing seats where both parties are, are actively campaigning, spending resources, and both campaigns are well-funded. I think Democrats need to take 13 of those 27 to take the majority back. So it's a, a, certainly an uphill battle for Republicans to hold the House. Many of these seats are in suburban districts. Democrats have been making gains in the suburbs. There's a lot to watch. I think the Democrats are nearly more likely to take the House back, but I think the Republicans are going to hold and perhaps even gain a couple seats in the Senate. Okay, we are out of time, but Matt, Ed, thank you both for sharing your perspectives with us tonight. Thanks. Thanks.